It's perpetual. And God wants to do something on the inside. If we'll just, if we'll just kind of just stand still for a minute and just really let God drop something. Don't leave out of here. Don't see, don't just let the flesh get excited without the spirit getting fed. We we do that so many times, and, and what happened is we have not got the principle. But the principle only gets down into the principle gets down into our spirit. The act gets in the flesh. Did you know that there are many people that have stopped using drugs but are not delivered from drugs? There are folk that have stopped cursing but are not delivered from it. You're not delivered from it until it gets down on the inside of you. Just because you stop doing an act don't mean you delivered. I stopped drinking a long time ago, but that spirit is waiting for the right opportunity. Say opportunity. All it's looking for a point of penetration or a door opener in your life. And that's why folk are being saved years and years and years and backsliding. I'm seeing so much. I've never seen so much backslide. It's, it's beyond me. I said all that to say this. That sickness that came up against my body, don't take me wrong, it was bigger than me. That The vision I had of my son, that's because the sickness, amen, my grandmother had this disease. My aunt had this disease. You getting your deliverance tonight. You getting your healing tonight. It's bigger than you. When you get healed, your generations get healed. When you get delivered, it's going down your bloodline. You're releasing the anointing down your bloodline. You got to stand. You can't give up. Stop thinking about suicide. Your children will become murderers, will become murderers of themselves. We got to think, listen, y'all, when we want to get delivered, when we want, when we want to do something for God, we got to think bigger than us. If I, don't, if I don't walk in this thing, I may curse the next generation. The things that I don't get delivered from, go into the next generation. But what I get delivered from, the buck stops here. Curse it to the root in your life. Hallelujah. It's about posterity. It's about the promises of God. Amen. Walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. If you're in here today, first of all, I bind the spirit of shame. And I bind the spirit of pride. I separate those two spirits. Shame and pride. You know when you get your biggest anointing? When you just walk up and say, I need to be delivered. That, is, that, that cracks the shell. Especially when you, especially when you, you know, up front, or you apostle, or I am the apostle. You need to say, I need deliverance. We hold the things on the inside of us, and then, and then we release in spiritual generational curses because we won't get delivered. And we're producing a generation of children that hate deliverance because their mamas and daddies never got delivered. We're producing a generation that have heard it talked about but never seen it done. God, just lay, God said, lay it all down tonight. You know what? I was in a meeting in Nashville, and this prophet... I ain't trying to be funny none, but this man, he ain't no shyster. I know a shyster when I see one. This man could tell you your phone number. That's how God speak through him. But because there be so many shysters, we don't believe. If God could tell you, God could tell you your phone number. God could tell you anything he want to tell you. Why would God tell you your phone number? He told me my phone number because I wasn't paying attention. And when I heard that man call my phone number, I knew it was me. I was just like, I'm ready to get out of here tonight. And God called my phone number. I ran around that place. He was preaching in, in Nashville. And you know what he said? He said, y'all, I'm, I'm tired of playing the game. He said, if, if I wanted to, some of you are so desperate, I could beat you for your money right now. But I'm tired of playing the game. And he said, I'm not prophesying to nobody. And he didn't. 
He said, let's just love on Jesus. And you know what? Revival broke out in that place. People started repenting. Preachers started coming up front and crying. Just, just, I, you know what? what, what if you don't get rid of it, the enemy going to always hold that thing over your head. If you don't tell it, the devil going to tell it for you one day, and I guarantee you he's going to get it wrong. Let the Holy Spirit deal with your heart. Close your eyes right now and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. God, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. And God, we thank you for the people that have gathered today. But we thank you for a power driving anointing up in this place. God, there are some that are under the sound of my voice right now, God. They're, they're in distress. Financial distress, marital distress. Some folk don't even have peace. Spirit of fear, spirit of poverty, spirit of lack. In, in, your, in your ministers, God, in your leaders, I promise you he would have been the number one member on my list. He would have been member of the year. He called me and he said, Apostle Kim, um, I have to resign from the finance board. I'm like, why? He was like, I don't believe in tithing anymore. It's not of God. I'm hearing the Christian cartoons preaching on tithing. Creflo Dollar is talking about tithing. You just got to listen in the spirit and take advantage. Not now, the good thing is when we know that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises.